Well, boys and girls, pack it up. It's time to go home. The game is over. What's going on, YouTube people? Today, got a little update on the CT scanning nonsense. Sports Cards Lessons, a.k.a. Boston Card Hunter, has been working with, communicating with, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the Industrial Inspection Consulting, LLC, whatever these guys are called over here. And we all thought vintage will be safe. Sure, flawless with its crazy patches and serial numbers and autographs and eminence and national treasures and that sort of stuff. You know, that's scary for sure. Uh, but, you know, vintage cards, there's nothing on them. It can't pick it up. Well, he sent in a pack of 86 Fleer. And as you could see on the results, you could clearly see, I mean, it clearly is a little bit of a stretch here, but you could definitely tell that that says Humphreys on it. So vintage, at least, you know, whether you consider 86 Fleer vintage or not, to each their own, 86 Fleer is at least not safe. If 86 Fleer isn't safe, I have to assume most other paper-based products are also not safe. Now, ripple effects, if any, because, you know, this happened, and I still don't know that a lot of people seem to care about it. The manufacturers, though, behind closed doors are telling people that they're taking it seriously. We have yet to see them roll anything out up front yet, and I do think it's something you need to get in front of. But I don't know how you can trust anything, anything remotely high end. Anything remotely high end is cooked. Why would you ever buy a PSA graded pack of 86 Flare or 52 Tops or insert whatever iconic set you want here? Because for 75 bucks... They could tell you what's in it. On the old school stuff, that makes way more sense. On the more modern stuff, I still think that's a little safe for like your average box of Prism or, you know, uh, Topps Chrome Sapphire or whatever because of the price point to scan it. The value prop isn't there per se, but maybe it is. I don't know. You know, we don't know what they charge for box pricing on this they don't have a quote for boxes uh they just have packs uh basically 75 bucks a pack but you can get boxes scanned i don't know what it would be if a single pack is 75 a box is probably pretty pricey so if a box costs a couple hundred bucks you're probably okay in that realm anything remotely expensive is absolutely cooked in my opinion and you are a fool fool to be chasing higher end stuff higher end wax higher end packs whatever 2018 tops update everyone's chasing otani or tops or bowman or whatever huh, just scan it that wax is expensive enough now i think there's gonna be at least in the short term the medium term some sort of threshold where the risk picks up whatever the price point per box is on that i don't 100 percent know but I think that's where it kind of falls in line at. But the fact that vintage isn't safe really just, I think it takes it to another level, in my opinion. Um, you know, before you could avoid the RPA, the patch cards, the thick nonsense, you kind of knew. But now this puts everything, absolutely everything in play. Everything. If they could do 86 Fleer, Anything is possible. It just is. If you could crack that code. And, you know, boxes of 86 Fleer, what do you guarantee? Not You're not guaranteed, but what's the average? Like three Jordans or something per, you know, could you use this if you were doing a whole box to see if maybe one box has two versus four? Or, you know, he mentions in the, the reel here, that you could probably at least get a rough idea on centering of a card. You're not going to know the rest of the condition of the card, 
but you would be able to figure out centering. The scarier part to me is what we talked about a couple of minutes ago is the loose packs. Whether they're graded by PSA or not, it doesn't matter. That PSA holder is not going to stop pack scanning. So if you're buying high-end loose packs, you're a crazy person. You're an absolute crazy person. Because if a single pack costs a thousand dollars or more i mean you just have to assume that thing's been ct scanned you know people were joking on the wemby box thing that's 8k that's coming out in a month you know what would stop you from buying a bunch of those and ct scanning them pulling out the low numbered ones flipping the other ones even if you broke even on it you know maybe it's eight grand for the box uh, let's make up a number and say it's 500 bucks to scan it plus taxes, whatever you're into a box for nine grand. Let's say you could flip it on the secondary market for 10. Uh, so you could ship it off to them, have them scan it, get it back. Sir, look through the scans, see which ones have like anything numbered to 10 or less on it. Keep those ones and flip the rest. It's not that far fetched. If there is a way to increase profit, one thing remains undefeated in the collectible space. If you can maximize profit and it means you got to do something shady, people are going to do the shady thing. I got some questions. You know, I did that video. Uh, I don't remember if that was this week or last week on, you know, my Pokemon sealed stuff. And, and someone, a couple people were like, well, what about CT scanning? And I think that goes back to the price point thing. In the short to medium term, I feel okay-ish about it because of the price point. And the value prop is not there to scan that stuff. Now, for me personally, by the time the box has even got close to being that expensive, I probably won't have them anymore. At least that's my view on that level of product. But I do think once you hit a certain price point, things start getting scarier. And the problem is, the real problem here is, ultimately, manufacturers could solve this tomorrow, possibly. We don't know how. Uh, supposedly, the company that's doing the CT scanning, or this is this is a hell of a hell of a nice thing, are working with the companies to try to come up with something to either prevent it or flag it. I don't think they're going to be able to stop it. I do think they will probably be able to put something on the wrap or a sticker or something that would change colors or flag if it's been scanned. And I think that's good enough to be quite honest, if they could figure that out, at least then sealed boxes and cases would be okay. If there's some sort of crazy sticker on there uh, that's, you know, security tamper resistant, and if someone scans it, it turns bright red. And that tells you I've been scanned. I think that's at least good enough. Now, sealed packs would still be cooked, but modern sealed packs really aren't much of a thing. Uh, it's just not something you see as loose packs of ultra modern stuff. I guess maybe 30 years from now, maybe you do. Uh, but, you know, at that point, you would know to avoid loose packs. The, the problem with that is, though, that that fixes it for today. That solves from whatever they roll that out going forward, we're good, which is which is great and all, and they 100% need to do that. But everything prior to whatever day that happens is cause for suspect. Go look at that Wemby box video that I made. Go look at any product that comes out that's moderately expensive. All the comments are CT scan it. Well, you're going to CT scan it. Are you going to scan it? You can CT scan that. Oh, it was probably CT scanned. The manufacturers have got to get on this because it's going to affect them. The narrative on high end, it's going to affect them. Unless you're getting product on release day where, there, where there's just not enough time for these processes to happen, you know, that's the only way you might be safe. And I don't think the manufacturers like that. I've saw some people talk about, you know, is this something the manufacturers actually kind of like because it forces you to buy more direct from them or maybe even forces you to move towards like an EPAC model. 
where you have to buy direct from the manufacturer. I don't think they want to go that route. I think they really like having, the, you know, the card shop, not important from them from like a direct bottom line. LCSs are marketing vehicles for them. Look at the Tops Rip Knights. They need that network of champions. That's why the LCS, that's why they want to be partnered with them. That's why they want to keep them going. Because it's 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 a bunch of marketing agents for them. But they've got to get ahead of this. They have got to come out with something. And then I don't know what the hell the fix is for everything that exists out there in the wild. But I don't play in high-end wax, so I guess I'm okay for the most part. You know, I do have the Pokemon stuff I'll need to keep an eye on. But on the ultra high-end, that's not really my bag. If it is, good luck. Curious for your thoughts, as always, down below. Catch you boys and girls on the next one. Peace.